Welcome back to Studio 5. We hear the phrase forgive and forget a lot, but my next guest says it's a myth. Therapist Julie Hanks wants to clear up common myths about forgiveness and get to the truth. Why do we get forgiveness wrong, do you think, Julie? Well, we get stuck on it because it's like we, we want apologies, we want someone to pay for what they've done, and so I think it's human nature to hold on to to hurts mm -hmm. as a way to kind of feel justified. And so many clients that I worked with over the years, whether it's minor offenses or really severe abuse, struggle with like, what is forgiveness and how do I do it? Well, as we then set out to separate fact from fiction, if you will, do you have a clear definition that you kind of work around or work mm -hmm. with? Yes, yeah, I, my favorite simple definition is ceasing to feel resentment ceasing to feel resentment. Mm -hmm. So, and it's a willful decision to let go of that resentment. So with that definition, there isn't necessarily always a solution, a concrete solution no, tied to it. No, everybody has an individual process. And that's one of the ways we go wrong is we tell people how they should do it and when they should be done and when they should forgive. And it's really a personal, a personal process. You're going to basically bust five myths about forgiveness. Up first, forgiveness is forgetting. Why is that a myth? Because when you're hurt, it, you don't have to forget it. It's about releasing that negative energy. It's not about um, never thinking about it again. I mean, I've worked with a lot of abuse clients and there's no way that they're going to forget that they were mistreated. Right. But they can release that energy so it doesn't run their life. And so we also learn through experience. So why would we want to forget something that will teach us something about who we are and how we deal with things and, and how to protect ourselves in the future. On a more simple scale, I, I obviously can't speak to the abuse, the abuse scenario, but on a more simple scale, mm -hmm. that day-to-day -day forgiveness, though, every time you draw it up, is it possible to draw up something hurtful or you know a misgiving or a misspeak and not feel that negative yes. emotion that went with it? If, if you have let it go, and sometimes, I mean, you bring up a great point, it's more spiral and circular. It's not like once and done. I know in my life when something will get brought up again, I think, okay, I have to like re-let it go. So you're reworking through right. those emotions again. It's more again. of a spiral and not just like one time it's over. Because I would imagine if you sit and dwell on even little things, mm -hmm. it would drum up that same resentment mm -hmm. or those same you know hurtful feelings. Yeah. But, but dwelling on it and never ever thinking about it again or thinking that you shouldn't, those are different. Gotcha. So forgiveness is kind of, it's not running your life, it's not in the forefront of your mind and heart mm -hmm. anymore. Mm -hmm. So can you forgive someone and then excuse that someone from so your life? That's a huge myth. Um, a lot, this comes up a lot with couples, right? So, okay, if I forgive my wife for infidelity, does that mean I have to stay with her? No, you can say, I forgive you, I get it, I'm releasing that, and I want a divorce. What if you're more, okay, all right. You're like, what? Wait, what right. if, what if you're more tied to the person um, through a familial connection, so like a sister, right? Yeah. I, I, a sister does something to, that highly offends me, I forgive her, yet I'm still gonna see her every year at Thanksgiving. Right, there are extreme situations where people do cut off family members because for their own survival. But in that situation, yeah, you're gonna see your sister again because you, there's more positive than, than hurt in the relationship. Um, but again, we don't give ourselves permission to uh, take a, you can take a break. Maybe you don't go to the, if you're really hurt and you're working on forgiving and you don't want to see her, that's okay. Don't go to the next family party. Give yourself that time. What if that time has stretched on to years? It, it happens. Um, but I think one of the things that's important to remember about forgiveness is that it's a gift to yourself. Mm. It's, a, it's freeing yourself. Not about that other person. I mean, it's about both, but it's mostly a gift to you. Uh, and in my own experience, the image that comes to mind is kind of like holding prison, like holding doors shut on a prison. Somebody's in there and you're like, I'm just gonna keep you in here and I'm so mad. But what happens is you're tied to the prison, you're in prison too, because you can't let go and walk mm -hmm. away. You're, mm -hmm. you're there too. We've touched on this a little, a little bit, but you say another myth, just to spell it out plainly, is that forgiveness means not feeling mad or hurt. You talked about that spiral, that you mm -hmm. do still have to work through the negative emotions. Right, so you can't cease to feel resentment unless you actually feel it. So part of the process is forgiving is experiencing the impact of another's behavior on you and feeling those experiences. So a lot of times um, 
especially in spiritual communities, is like, well, you need to forgive and don't be mad anymore and don't, like, we tell people what to do. And part of forgiveness is feeling the impact of whatever that behavior was. Working through it, working through the Right, feelings. the only way is through. You can't really go around it. That's, what's, that's cheap forgiveness. What's the balance between forgiveness and an accountability? Sometimes I think people get caught up that if I'm just going to hands off forgive, does that really, I guess it's not our job in the end to hold that person accountable, but the right. situation kind of sometimes feels like it warrants a little more work. Okay, so give me, do you have an example of what you're thinking of in terms of accountability? No, let, no, let me think. Okay, well, let me just say that Letting go of the negative feelings does not mean you don't require restitution or you don't press charges or you don't right, right, right. Just set a boundary. Okay, so maybe back to the sister so situation. I'm trying to kind of keep it day to day. Okay. I, I, yeah, yeah, those yeah. other examples are a little out of reach for me, but I realize they connect to a lot of other people out there. Um, so your sister offends you, right? right? And she's done something that you feel is maybe morally, ethically wrong. To you. To you. Like stolen money? Sure. Or, let's okay. go there. Okay. Stolen money. Okay. Um, and you're going to forgive her, but then how do you work that dialogue okay. with that relationship to help her navigate as well through the right, situation. Right, yeah, yeah. So you can forgive her and still require that she pays back the money. You can release that and say, you know what? We will not be back where we were until you pay me back that thousand dollars. So she's not paying back the thousand dollars. It goes on and on and on. And finally, you realize you're not going to get your money back at that mm -hmm. point. It requires probably it, a different level of. Then it's up to you. Okay. And then you also want to figure out, okay, how close do you want to be to this person who doesn't respect? your property or your right. boundaries, or, you right. know what I mean? Right. Then you're in another discussion. Good role play. Good role play. We <laughs> just did that. That, Woo. that was good. Woo. All right, your final myth, forgiveness should happen immediately. And we've touched on this, but that idea that, I, I, but you do see people who do it, and I have to say I admire them. I admire when people oh, are able to let go immediately. I, I agree. And I think sometimes we look to those big examples as if that's the norm and it's not. I mean, that is really a gift, I think, that some people have in certain situations. It's not necessarily everybody's process, mm -hmm, right? We mm -hmm. can aspire to that if that's what you want, but uh, in my experience, it's, it's really never happened that way. Um, and I haven't had near the offenses that any, you know. Sure. I mean, I'm thinking of um, Chris Williams, who that's wrote the book, Let It Go. Yeah. To me as well. And that is, that is just, that's his experience. It doesn't have to be ours, um, even though we can aspire to it. Sure, sure. And, I, you know, sometimes we are um, impatient with ourselves, like, I should be over this. I should be over this. Uh -huh. And again, it's going through those feelings. And then when you're ready to let it go, you let it go. Does forgiveness require an apology, Julie? <laughs> it helps, but it doesn't. It, I've worked with clients who have uh, family members or loved ones who have passed on. How do you forgive someone who's no longer on the planet, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. That is a gift to you. It doesn't require anything from the other person, although that can help, but it's not necessary. It's a good conversation. <laughs> Very insightful topic. You're going to wait to continue this conversation online. Yes, yes. A lot of people have questions that come up about this. So um, on Instagram or Facebook, Dr. Julie Hanks, uh, hashtag forgiveness myths, and I'll answer questions and you know people can ask personal questions or whatever, and we'll, we'll keep the discussion going. It's a great opportunity, Julie. Thank you so much. Thanks, Brooke. Well, if you like